Greetings, my darlings. I am back again with another video and I'm gonna do my best to make this one as concise as possible, meaning I'm going to get to the point. For a description of the Orishas and energies that I speak of, check the description box below if you're not familiar with any of the names that I'm pronouncing. And I'm going to contribute my input on decoding the meaning behind Beyonce's new project entitled Black is King. I'm going to scratch the surface and I'm going to take it from ancient Egypt, also known as Kemet, into West Africa. This quick explanation is tied into me breaking down the Lion King story and the Black is King production. If you understand the spiritual and cultural history of how Kemetic or ancient Egyptian science is connected to West African spiritual science, you will understand that many of the peoples from Eastern Africa migrated over into Western Africa over a 1,400 year time period during the time of Roman persecution when they pushed from Kemet into Sudan and then they pushed west into a route called Bilad al-Sudan and they made their way into West Africa. This is not to say that West Africans were not already there, but many people from the East over a 1,400 year time period migrated over there and brought their customs and mingled their customs. Let's discuss the theme of the song already featuring Shata Wale from Ghana. First of all, let's dissect the whole history and meaning of what the Lion King was all about because the Lion King is an ancient story that existed before Disney. If you study the ancient legends, many cultures all throughout the continent of Africa and indigenous lands had stories of two brothers warring and fighting against one another. A more wicked-hearted brother betraying a more pure-hearted brother who has good intentions, such as the story of Esau and Jacob, Cain and Abel, etc., etc. Well, if you go back into ancient Kemet, also known as ancient Egypt, there are stories there about two brothers, Set and Osar. Osiris was pure in heart and had good intentions. Osiris' skin was the color green, representing the earth, fertility, and the land. So his brother Set was envious of him and wanted to take his place as king. So Set had his brother killed. And not only had him killed, but cut off his male parts and threw it in the river. Symbolically, what that means to me is, is not only the death of Asar or the death of the purity of the original man, but also the castration of the original man. Set's energy will represent an imposter seeking to usurp the throne and take over. If you think of Mufasa, the father of the Lion King, Mufasa would be synonymous to Asar, also known as Osiris, and Set would be Scar. It's the same narrative where Scar pushes Mufasa off of the cliff and kills him in order to take the throne and then he has a corrupt reign. If you also look at other melanated cultures, you will see beings such as Krishna, an elevated being, likened unto Haru or Horus. His skin is also a bluish green color. And that color, once again, in my take, represents our ancestors before the fall, our ancestors before corruption, our ancestors before scarcity mentality, and ruling with truth, justice, and righteousness. So when you see the scene where the people are bluish, greenish colors in the trees, and they have their hands over their eyes, it represents they are already God. They are already pure, but they don't know it. They don't realize it. They don't see themselves. Do you know who you are? They have the cowries on their heads, which represents the crown of wealth, but their eyes are closed. They can't see it. The men in purple, their hands are over their eyes because they don't see themselves. They don't remember their history. They don't remember their names. They don't remember who they are. They're like the lost Simba going down the river of confusion and being temporarily separated from their great mother and their ancestors and their royal lineage. When I say royal lineage, I don't mean that all of us are walking around like kings and queens in ancient times. But whether your people were goat herders, farmers, or nomads, 
It is noble to know thyself and to know thy history, and that is royal within itself. Certain parts I won't get into in order to keep this short and sweet, but those are the main points that stood out to me. A people who are already, they are what they are, but they don't know it. They don't remember. I always talk about when we're born, we forget. In the human experience, we forget that we are created having a human experience. We forget that we are our ancestors having a human experience. It's just a matter of realizing. The first one that stood out to me the most, forgive me if I butcher the pronunciation, is Ja Arae. The first thing I noticed about this particular song was where it seems that the king that was portraying Simba was tempted to go on a wrong path. He was enjoying the cares of the flesh and the cares of this world without using balance and wisdom. And when he welcomes his friend with the red hat that looks sort of like a fez, it immediately reminded me of the Orisha Eshu, the trickster Orisha of the crossroads. His friend suddenly turned into the energy of Scar, who is the villain and the uncle that slayed Simba's father, Mufasa, as they are riding around in a hearse. Which in my take represents the human body being like a coffin or a sarcophagus that houses the human spirit. The next part that I noticed is there was a being that looked like what they would call in Benina the homie Azambito. which I also, in this particular sense, likened unto a gungun in this particular situation in Yoruba society, which represents the ancestors because the face has to be covered. Everything has to be covered, including their hands. With the main character already riding in the passenger seat in the hearse, the being was crawling up, which represented to me the threat of death, the threat of destruction, and the threat of danger. That's why the music slowed down a little bit because that's what the song metaphorically represents is to be careful, slow down, take it easy to a degree. It's kind of a phrase that gives a warning. So as the being which I liken unto ancestors is threatening to take the prodigal son and the character which I liken unto Eshu is laughing, which also reminds me of Eshu in his trickster state. And then the main character, Simba, awakens from his nightmare, which once again is a warning because that's how ancestors can often give us warnings is via nightmares or dreams that startle us awake. With the friend representing the energy of Eshu Elegba, Eshu will often present us with options when we are at a crossroad in making a decision, which is the highest decision versus which is the best decision. But when we're tempted to go the way of our flesh, Eshu is the type of energy sometimes when he's in his trickster state that will have you thinking you're doing the right thing the right way. When you're going down a path of unnecessary ego, temptation, and destruction, he will laugh as he also teaches you a lesson because there's always wisdom in the trickery of Eshu. I also heard the reference in this song of standing your ground like Ogun. If you are familiar with Ogun, he is the Orisha of iron in war. So in that particular part, I took it as being brave, standing up for yourself, not backing down when you are faced with an obstacle or war. On the particular part of the production, there is a song entitled, Don't Jealous Me. And you will see the man that is asking the young Simba, who are you? and he's holding a white snake in which Beyonce also ends up holding that white snake. Now kind of stepping out of Yoruba cosmology a little bit, in Benin, Togo, and Dahomey, the snake is not considered a sinister entity, but is a representation of Dambalawero, also known as Don. Dambala would be likened unto the chief Orisha and creator of human bodies known as Obatala. Which represents purity, light, intelligence, wisdom, and fair judgment. 
Also, when the sacred serpent swallows its tail, it would also represent, metaphorically speaking, the circle of life. Wata. On the song entitled Wata, people may debate this part, but when Beyonce was at the river with the basket on her head, with the other maidens dancing behind her, I liken that unto the Haitian version of Wudun, representing the Venusian energy of Erzuli Freda whose energy is synonymous to Oshun in the Haitian system. And also when she had a ponytail sticking up and they had the pink banner behind her, I did not get Obanani vibes from that because the Orisha Obanani's colors are also pink. I got more energy of Erzuli Freda more than anything else, especially with the dancing, the joyousness, the coy behavior, et cetera, et cetera. Because there's a different story behind Oba to where she tends to cloak herself and go into seclusion. In the particular scene where there's a big dust storm and Beyonce is taking the baby to the river, like in the biblical story of Moses' mother taking him to the river, in order to keep him safe. I liken that unto a spiritual mother releasing her child into the human experience. I also liken that particular scene to death and rebirth. It being starting with good intentions and innocence and then possibly becoming tainted and corrupted by life and challenges to where when the baby gets older, represented as Simba, he meets the weary elder when he is close back to his ascent to his ancestors. When the main character playing the role as Simba ascends into the heavenly realm of his ancestors. I couldn't help but to think of anything but Shango greeting Obatala. Also, the innocent baby makes it back to its mother after a long, dangerous journey on the river when the baby makes it back to the land of the ancestors when Beyonce greets the child. And on the next part, I'm going to discuss the horns that Beyonce wore. I make no judgments of good and evil of entities such as Baphomet because I don't have enough information on that particular energy because I focus on my lane. But I just want to say that the horns that she wore with the circular disc in the middle represents the ancient Egyptian goddess Heheru, also known as Hathor. Whose energy is also synonymous to Oshun. Lakshmi, Urzule Freda, etc., etc. Heheru, also known as Hathor, is the sacred mother cow who was not the mother of Haru, who would also be likened unto Simba, the Lion King. But Heheru is the nurse that supplies the milk to Haru, who was the son of Asar and Isis, also known as Aset. I hope I'm not confusing you. Check the description box. So Het Heru, the sacred mother cow that is the goddess of music, love, sensuality, she's reminding Haru, the young Simba, you are the king already. I nursed you with your mother Isis, known as Aset. You are already the king. That is what she is reminding him of. So that's what the cow represents because the cow gives milk. So that is what Het Heru represented in ancient times before she was called Oshun or even Aphrodite because the concept of Aphrodite and Venus came from ancient Kemet and before she was Aphrodite and Venus, she was Het Heru. West Africa, Oshun. In Haiti, Erzule Frida, etc., etc. Even if you do not believe that the black woman is goddess or God, I think we all can agree, even based on science, that the black woman is the oldest ancestor of mankind. She is the mother of mankind. So I know I'm gonna butcher her name, but when the South African artist Busiswa, Busiwa, oh my goodness, Busiwa, when she said Tulani, I used to know someone named Tulani. The name Tulani is synonymous to quiet and calm. She said, Tulani, there will be peace when I'm done. So what I took that as, I got chills when she said that. 
when it's all said and done, no matter how upside down this world is, we go to war, there will be peace when the mother is restored on her throne because everything begins with her and everything will end with her and it will end in peace, ma'at and order. So what reinforced that for me was when the pregnant woman had a whole war paint and she was dancing. So that's what I took that as because she is giving birth to the savior of the world that will restore peace on earth. Beyonce had a scene at the beginning of the production, I believe it was the Find Your Way Back video, and it's depicting Yemoja, also known as Aset, the Great Mother, who would be depicted by Sarabi, the mother of the Lion King in the movie. A lot of people don't know, but the idea of Mother Mary, Sacred Mother of God, it comes from Aset and Yemoja. Many people don't know this, but Yemaya's colors are not only blue, but they're also crystal, the color of water in Yoruba land, even wearing white sometimes. Simba would represent Haru, who is the redeemer of his father. So it's a beautiful account. I'll stop right there, but, but that's my take on it. I thought it was very positive. Regardless of what you think about Beyonce, whether you like her, don't like her, that's none of my business. I will say this, despite people judging her platform, she said this was her passion project and she really didn't have to do that. I believe this is the birth of a renaissance where people are going to start doing the Sankofa and going back to the roots of their ancestors because nothing else has worked at this point. So that's my take on it. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, comment, and I look forward to speaking to you all soon. And remember, we can agree to disagree respectfully. It's just my take based on legends that came from Mother Africa. Peace and bliss.